I have two mechanical keyboards to unbox today, both of which may be of interest to Mac users in particular. The first is this Matthias Tactile Pro, and the second is a DAS Keyboard Pro. I'm a long time user of DAS keyboards. I've been using a DAS Keyboard Pro with Cherry MX Browns, which is for a number of years now, and it's still my go to keyboard. But I recently acquired the Keychron K10, which impressed me a great deal. I also had a K1 low profile keyboard, which got me interested in the Keychrons initially. Uh, the Keychron K10 I ordered with blue switches. I was pleasantly surprised by just how much I enjoyed the clicky switches of the Gatoron G Pro Blues, and that's why I ordered the, the DAS Keyboard Pro with the Cherry MX Blues, reasoning that if I like the DAS Keyboard Pro with browns, I might like the blues even better. So let's see what we have here. Get the outer bubble wrap off. Just take one more slice there. There we go. Oh, quite a nice looking box. It says the Matthias Tactile Pro, a better keyboard for your Mac. I have read that this is largely inspired by um, an earlier Apple Mac keyboard, um, but improving on that, which is something that I think Matthias have done on a number of occasions. The first Matthias keyboard I had was a uh, Bluetooth uh, chiclet style full size keyboard uh, at a time when Apple didn't have a full size keyboard um, for their products. So, yep, quite a nice box. We've got the US layout marking on here, and we can see already from the image on the front that the uh, this is a Mac keyboard first and foremost. On the reverse, we have legendary Alps feel and speed. So something that I was aware of is that this keyboard does not use Cherry switches or clones, but uh, an Alps style key. Um, so I'll be interested to see what that feels like. Looks quite nice, looks quite retro. I'd say a kind of a 90s look on this keyboard but we'll find out when we get into it for real. So, have we got any plastic, any sealing on here? No, so we can just pull this, the flap and into the box. Nice foam pad for a bit of protection, nice to see. And then we have the keyboard. And uh, nice to see that the cable is detachable and comes detached initially. So we have inside this envelope keyboard itself and we've got some further foam packaging underneath for some additional protection. This is a very very glossy and shiny white plastic. I don't know if the, the shine is coming off there. Um, further enhances that 90s aesthetic that I'm getting off of this. Uh, we can see we've got a USB port at either end of the keyboard which is nice. So this has a, a hub capability and the USB-C connection right there. I think at least I think that's USB-C, which we'll find out shortly. On the reverse, we have some plastic feet, quite stiff. That's good to see. They shouldn't um, give way and very chunky as well. So there's two, two very substantial feet on either end. Nice. And what else is in the box here? We've got a instruction sheet in various languages, including the warranty. Nice, there's instructions about the special function keys on Mac. And also in the box, hmm, two cables, interesting. And so this first cable here, let's have a look, see. It's got a USB, USB A, connector on one end with a USB-C adapter in place. And on the other end is a right angled micro USB. So it's not USB-C. Let's just see now. Yep, so that fits in there like so. And so the USB-C adapter is to enable you to plug it directly into more modern Mac, Macs, obviously, including MacBook, your MacBook Pros with their USB-C ports. So in the final packaging here, we have another cable. 
Ah, I was expecting this to be a straight through connector, but it's not. It's another USB, USB A to a right angled micro USB. Uh, but this is just a longer keyboard. So it's an interesting choice to include two cables. Um, it's not braided, it is just a sheath in a clear plastic. Um, again, this suggests that they're going for that 90s GMAC vibe. That's it for, for the packaging in the keyboard itself. So let's move that out of the way and let's have a quick look at the keyboard proper. What's to say? It's a, it's a keyboard. Um, what's nice to see is that we do have legends that include all of the um, extended characters that are available on a Mac keyboard. It does result in a rather busy look on the legends, I have to say, um, but that could be convenient over time. One other nice touch is that the caps lock indicator is built into the key itself uh, rather than being a separate indicator and there are no other indicators. Obviously there's no need for a num lock indicator because on a Mac a number pad is a number pad. It cannot be toggled into a cursor, P, cursor pad. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I just noticed that there's actually a third USB port on the back here. So you've got one at either end as we looked at previously and this third one here and consulting the packaging there we can see that this is indeed a three port usb 2 hub so it's only usb 2 speeds but still quite convenient for connecting a mouse uh, and other devices for which transfer speeds are not so critical turning now to the das keyboard so we'll just move this out of the way and the das keyboard came in a ridiculously sized box um, which cost me a pretty penny in shipping from the US because the shipper I use uses volumetric charges. So let's have a look and see just how much wasted space there is inside this box. I'm expecting there to be quite a lot. Oh yes, look at this. So I paid to ship an inordinate number of airbags across the Pacific. So we'll just move those out of the way. And here's the DAS keyboard itself. So let's get this big box off the table. There we go. Um, so again, a uh, nice, nice box. Um, not quite as professional looking as the, the Keychron, um, and the tact, but very comparable with the Tactile Pro. You can see this is the DAS keyboard for professional. Uh, with the MX Blue switches, um, and for clarity, that's a clicky typing experience. So on the back, we see the keyboard in profile um, with its trademark um, ruler key rest. Very nice, and I like I do like the blue accent on the box. Actually, it's kind of um, emphasising the fact that this is the blue switch. Um, the brown, obviously, I don't remember the brown having brown accents on the box, um, but yeah, this is nice to see. So let's have a look inside. Again, no plastic sealing on the box itself, so we can just flick that open. And inside, as I said, there's the um, the trademark ruler rest. So for those of you that don't know, the DAS keyboard um, doesn't have legs to adjust its height. It has this magnetically attached ruler strip. Um, and then I think we'll find that that's essentially it. I just have some safe, quite awkward packaging. The cable on a DAS keyboard is hardwired, not detachable. It's one of the few bugbears that I have about the keyboard. Um, it is very long though, um, which again could be a blessing or it could be a curse because it's not detachable. You don't have the choice. And there's the keyboard itself inside its lovingly provided foam envelope. So yep, it's a DAS keyboard. Um, I can already tell the, the clickiness on the keys, quite different from the cherry brown model that I already have. Um, and I'll just show you, that's where the, the ruler attaches on the back. So that's it. So we have the, the volume knob, the media control keys, and the sharp eyed among you may have noticed that the modifier keys on this keyboard are not Mac modifiers. That's because I messed up when I ordered this and I ordered the PC edition by mistake. 
So that's the Matthias Tactile Pro and the Dash Keyboard Pro, both unboxed, sitting here now waiting to be reviewed. As well as individual reviews for each of these keyboards, I'm also planning to compare a number of keyboards, including the Keychron K10, the K1, and some other keyboards that I have. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And to make sure you don't miss those forthcoming reviews, subscribe to the channel. I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching.